Carrie and Egon, great to see you as always. Uh, Carrie, let's start with you. A number of studies released this year have found that uh, what I think many First Nations on the ground would tell you that Indigenous communities are impacted the most by wildfires. Uh, what are your thoughts on those findings? Um, it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of Indigenous people that are living in the northern regions. And when there is forest fires, their communities are, are the hardest hit. And they're the ones that are always having to evacuate. Um, earlier this year, I was in Saskatoon and the entire hotels were, were booked up with, with Indigenous people and they were just congregating in, in areas. And I know that they would much rather be at home. They, I've, I've lived in the North. I've, um, my family was, my in-laws were lived in the north and they didn't like coming to cities because they didn't like feeling like outsiders and i my heart goes out to all the ones that constantly have to do that because they're uprooting and they're they leave without knowing if their home will still be there when they return mm -hmm. Uh, Negan, you know, it's not just fires, often it's floods. Uh, this report that was using data from a, a few years ago found that over the last 13 years, First Nations communities experienced more than 1,300 emergencies, leading to more than 580 evacuations, affecting more than 130,000 people. Uh, what do you make of those numbers? Yeah, five, we make up 5% of the country, but 42% of evacuees uh, just this year alone. You can imagine all the other uh, floods, uh, other climate related disasters. I mean, it really proves that climate change is disproportionately impacting our communities. And we're really not just talking about property here, although obviously having your homes, your possessions, everything destroyed is devastating. Uh, we're also talking about the destruction of historical and ceremonial sites. Uh, we're talking about the trauma of removing people from communities and putting them in hotels, as Carrie talked about, uh, which leads directly to substance abuse, uh, suicide, depression, mental health issues, even leads to children in the child welfare system. Uh, because we know that when uh, children and families are removed, they suffer stresses and endure more hardship, which results in children in the child welfare system. And what we're really talking about is an ongoing neglect of Indigenous rights because uh, we have traditional practices. We've been used to forest fires for centuries as Indigenous peoples, but because our practices were banned uh, and outlawed, uh, now just our simple issue of our rights, that the fact that we can handle forest fires in our communities, if we had infrastructure, if we had supports, if we had human resources in our communities uh, and we were supported to be able to handle this, we would have emergency services. You know, most First Nations don't even have an emergency service department because are too busy dealing with issues of moldy housing, uh, fresh water, uh, issues of infrastructure. So, I mean, this is a much bigger issue, but it's really proof that climate change is disproportionately affecting our lives. Indeed. Uh, Carrie, is the federal government doing enough to help prevent these types of things? And, and as Negan says, like, is Indigenous knowledge being used enough? No, Indigenous knowledge is not being used enough. Um, like he said, there were traditional practices there was burning of old um, areas to make for new growth and it was it was common among the prairies and in areas and they were able to manage um, traditionally and when we're talking about whether or not the federal government is doing enough um, I find issue with that because it shouldn't just be on the federal government. Mm -hmm. The provincial government has a responsibility. The municipalities have a responsibility. It should be a shared responsibility among everybody because Indigenous people are people. They're citizens of this country and this land. And yet, whenever, whenever something happens, it's like, okay, they're the responsibility of the, the federal government and it's all pushed onto them. And there's this idea that the federal government's gonna come and have a solution. And then so everybody standoffish and they don't give that support. Whereas if it was a municipality that was affected, the province, um, neighboring municipalities, everybody would jump in and help. But that doesn't happen for First Nations people because they're seen as a jurisdictional issue. They're the responsibility of the federal government. And 
and nobody's doing enough. Uh, Nigon, officials in the NWT have told us that this is going to be the norm for at least a few more years. Is this uh, our new reality? Uh, yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, there's not enough being done to deal with the issue of climate change. And uh, Kerry's right. I mean, a, a big gap here and a big problem is the role of the provinces. Uh, the provinces are spending copious amounts of resources, time, effort uh, to reject carbon taxes, to reject uh, regulations by the federal government to deal with the issue of climate change. I mean, the issue is really that the federal government is trying its best. Uh, I, I think, you know, $1.8 billion invested in supporting uh, climate change within communities, promising to have uh, every First Nations with an emergency management plan by 2030. I mean, these are things that the federal government are attempting to do, but the provinces continue to leave First Nations, Métis communities, Inuit communities out of the planning for forest management and emergency services, which are their two responsibilities. So what ends up happening is that these communities are denied while, you know, certain towns towns and villages are focused upon by the provinces. So guess who gets protected when it comes to the issue of forest fires and flooding and other issues related to climate change that happen all the time, soil degradation and so on. So what we see is we really see a big problem with the provinces right now. Uh, I'm not saying the federal government's doing everything or doing everything well, but I'm saying that they are taking action. There's a national adaptation plan uh, that includes First Nations and the consultations that took two years, the provinces are certainly doing much less, if anything at all. Kerry and Egon, we'll have to leave it there, but appreciate you both being here as always. Yeah, you bet. Okay.